Hello, everybody. Um, tonight I wanted to talk about the river system in the Far East um, and uh, basically go through um, all the major rivers and uh, look at some totally new ideas. Um, I was personally very surprised um, after studying these rivers. Um, it kind of uh, really surprised me even what's going on in Russia um, and how uh, little I knew and then how um, basically it really changes everything uh, from business uh, to uh, just where you might travel and uh, just pretty much every detail um, probably goes back to water and food um, as well as population. So we're going to look through a bunch of different maps tonight. Um, this is the population aquifer map and river map. Um, here's primarily the river map uh, showing uh, basically the far east. Um, and then I wanted to kind of um, look through the topological map uh, because it kind of gives us an idea uh, for how important um, basically the mountain ranges are in shaping what's going on with the river system. And then the soil map is also kind of a hidden map um, that a lot of people maybe haven't looked at. Um, and it basically shows us uh, kind of the flood zones and some kind of areas of the river that we might not have otherwise understood well unless we looked at the soil map. And then here's kind of the um, overall transportation map uh, for the Far East. Um, and then some earthquake stuff going on. And then just this totally awesome image from today um, showing both this hurricane that just came in um, into uh, essentially Vietnam and went over uh, the Philippines and parts of Taiwan and even Hong Kong. So, uh, and then we're just going to go through all the river maps here of the major rivers. Um, and basically, hopefully, a lot of it will be uh, very surprising. I have all these maps available uh, on my main website. So if you're interested in any of them, I've already posted them. Um, but we're going to kind of go through this um, and look at this uh, hopefully as carefully as possible so we can start to understand um, really our planet um, for the first time. Um, this is one of the first times in history um, that we've had this much data available. Um, very few people have seen everything, both the population and um, all the aquifer maps um, and just details about how the river systems work. Um, so I've kind of gone through here and diagrammed just about everything I could possibly think of uh, on the river system. I did leave out some markings um, because we're going to probably essentially talk about them. Um, for example, uh, perhaps we're going to talk primarily about the river system in the Far East here, which is in Asia. Um, as well as kind of uh, kind of looking uh, from a distance off into India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, um, but we're particularly going to be focused on um, basically the Himalayas and how that works. Uh, so, kind of the simple side of the Himalayas in terms of the river system is actually the Pakistan and India side, and we're not really going to talk about that. If you want to study that, you're welcome to study that, and I can talk about it in great detail. There are a couple perhaps really mysterious things. There's actually a secret river that comes right around through here and then back in through there. Um, and then we're going to really look carefully primarily at these guys in here uh, because they actually get closer to all these islands and it starts to become very important in terms of clean water um, in these areas. So basically we're gonna look at these very carefully and then I'm gonna even do this at a lighter, I should probably just keep it as a red. Um, but the, because the population is so significant in Hong Kong, uh, we're gonna try to look at that very carefully and basically look at these areas. Um, because as you can see, um, definitely um, this is a one major factor in India. Um, it's so important in India that I probably wanna just keep it as a separate topic. Um, but when you look at the um, this map here, um, which is kind of hard to see here. Let me zoom in um, to show you what we're talking about here. Um, on the relief map, uh, if you zoom in here, you'll basically start to see that uh, there's definitely kind of a bias in the Himalayas that kind of goes up into the Far East. So actually India 
uh, from what I understand, is actually sliding. The reason that the mountains are so tall here is because India actually fell underneath um, the Himalayas. So it's kind of been pushing in here and pushing up. And that's actually affected everything all the way up in here. And this is essentially one of the biggest mountain ranges on the planet by far in terms of height and also in terms of just the distance here. So um, basically, that's where we start to get into the Far East. So actually, the Far East is very hilly. Um, you'll notice Africa is pretty hilly here. And Europe, for the most part, is pretty flat, um, with the exception of Norway up here. Um, and actually, um, it's actually surprising. Um, a lot of Russia um, is maybe different than you might expect. And so the reason that I really like this map also is because it kind of tells us a different story about history, uh, particularly based on the geography. So a lot of us think about Moscow and Russia having a huge land area, but actually the Ural Mountains actually kind of creates a very important divider and actually raises a very important question about how big Russia should be or shouldn't be and how to essentially work on the North Pole a little bit differently um, than we all might think. And of course, this map is not quite accurate because it's not it's not on a 3D surface. So this map here um, kind of gives us a more accurate perspective of what the North Pole may look like. But man, does it get cold up there. So it's very cold in Russia. It's hard to explain how much colder that is. Um, there's only certain parts of the United States and you have to get up into Canada uh, before you get that cold. Um, so really one way to look at history um, is based on the uh, biology, the climate, um, and just the geography rather than trusting necessarily what the history books say. So this map kind of shows us some of the climate zones. Um, and as you get to be really hot, it's basically very jungly. And you can actually see that China is actually quite cold and actually the temperature is a lot like the United States for the big part of China, but perhaps slightly warmer um, just because it's actually quite close to the south as well here. So, um, But going back to the river system, so you can start to see that there's a different picture, particularly on the North Pole with these rivers that a lot of people have never even known simply because it's so cold and so few people live out here, but they're definitely very important rivers. Um, to think about. Um, so we're going to leave that as part of the discussion. Um, but um, essentially what we want to look at is the complexity of, um, essentially these are some of the most complicated rivers in the world because these are some of the most tallest mountains and also diversity of how it all kinds of spreads out here. Um, so you can see there's kind of a weird, um, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, but essentially there's kind of two sides to the Himalayas. Uh, there's a side over here on Afghanistan and Pakistan, and then there's kind of a bigger side over here in China, essentially, um, heading out into different parts of Asia, um, which starts to create different um, complexities. India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, the people look very similar here. But then once you get to Myanmar uh, and Thailand and Vietnam, it basically becomes Asian and Far East um, and even out in the Philippines. And um, Indonesia, it actually is all pretty much Asian. Um, and it and even Japan here, so and Korea. So, uh, but basically, uh, you can see that this is a nice map as it kind of shows us quite a number of these rivers here. Um, but it doesn't quite get into the detail that we need um, for our discussion tonight. So, I highlighted where those rivers are essentially on this map. Um, but on this map, we can actually start to see a little bit more detail about where the aquifers are and these major river systems. So why is this so important? Um, well, if you're doing business with Shanghai, Hong Kong, Hanoi, Thailand, pretty much anywhere in Asia, it can really help uh, to understand uh, how it's all related and what's connected to what um, geographically because the... Um, China is not all the same, um, and each one of these parts uh, basically have different climates uh, and entirely different river systems. So, I mean, it's like uh, saying, you know, you live along the Mississippi River, all those cities that are connected along the Mississippi River or any of the other major rivers around the world um, would actually be very much related. So 
that's kind of why this discussion is important. Um, and we'll actually look at some of those maps a little more in detail. So uh, what I wanted to highlight here, I'm gonna turn this map back kind of the normal way that most people are used to it um, and take a look at all the details here. So it maybe it took me uh, months, if not years, uh, to really start to comprehend what's going on here um, and basically how important um, different areas are, right? So uh, there's some very big misunderstandings um, that I had, uh, particularly in China and particularly in this part of Southeast Asia, um, just because I didn't quite understand how the river system worked um, and what is causing what in terms of pollution and also in terms of clean water and just about every other aspect um, that you can think of. So I posted this link to this, um, but um, we can, I'm gonna actually re-grab this image and we're gonna re-try to highlight it. It was just hard to get everything um, essentially on uh, the uh, one image, but I'll add this to our discussion. It's gonna be a little bit slow for some reason because it's trying to do a screen record right now um, as well, so oh, and I got that going. That's partly why. So, um, <clears throat> so on this map, um, I'm going to redraw this so you can kind of see um, precisely what's going on. Um, maybe I can turn this off here to hopefully make this a little bit faster. Sorry about this. Um, but uh, some of the major rivers basically do not happen at all. Um, like I thought, I just wanted to highlight the question about Hong Kong uh, because so many people live in Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Macau, and this region in particular. So you really want to look at these triangular points where you have essentially a bunch of different river systems all kind of converging. Uh, that happens like up here, you'll see one right up here. Um, all over the world, you'll see these kind of points. But this is essentially where you have different plates so the water will drain one direction on one side of this aquifer and on the other um, and actually it turns out i had a friend that lives right in this point here um, and actually on one side he actually lived on this side and that actually drains all the way down here to shanghai right so that's part of the yangtze river uh we'll just diagram that one second but i'm going to diagram this one first um, and what happened here really surprised me. So I actually drew it slightly on the Macau side. Um, so what sh really surprised me was looking at the details about where and what, where the rivers actually drain to. So it's actually Hong Kong is on the uh, higher plateau. It's actually almost on a different plate entirely, a uh, different aquifer. So uh, the mountain range actually and everything changes uh, right there. So it may actually be more part of the Shanghai plate and actually Shanghai is actually on the south side here. So there's a whole region here that, that has a different watershed um, in China. So uh, and actually as you look at this in more and more detail um, you'll start to see uh, some very interesting things. Um, so another really interesting thing that surprised me was that there's actually up here in Beijing, um, it's totally different. The Yellow River is totally different than how I thought. So basically it comes around through here and it's actually splitting right through the middle here. Um, so we're going to go to the soil map in a moment. So let me just show you on the soil map. This whole area is a floodplain um, and I may even need to, people might get a little bit confused. So I'm going to try to use this one here so basically what's going on here so you can only tell this on a soil plane map um, so these are actually the river systems and this is actually flooded soil it's very moist soil typically dark soil and great for crops um, but what is really shocking um, is that this whole area is essentially a floodplain. Um, it's the only place like that in the entire planet. Um, you can go around and see um, it's basically one of the main biggest floodplains uh, in the world. So uh, that really surprised me. So basically when we're talking about <clears throat> uh, understanding this region, it's actually split up into separate floodplains. Um, and there's actually a separate floodplain that kind of goes almost on this side here. Uh, and then Beijing actually is coming primarily, the water system 
comes through here and a little bit south of Beijing. Um, so it's a little bit different than you might expect. Now, the hardest one to kind of track, at least in China, um, is actually the Yangtze, which actually goes almost all the way over here to Tibet, um, which is really surprising. So it actually pulls all the way around here, comes around here, goes through Wuhan, comes through here, and actually goes slightly on the north side. So I want to just zoom in uh, to show you some details on that. So we'll go into Hong Kong really quickly here so you can see how this works. Um, so the, the surprising factor here, um, as it loads kind of slowly, sorry about that, uh, you can see some of the mountain range. I may even need to turn that off um, because it just doesn't help uh, with... Oh, geez. Hopefully that will be a little bit easier to see. Um, maybe it's nicer with the mountain range, but this makes it very clear how this works. So you can see my friend actually lived on this side of the, in this lake, which is Qiming, and there's another lake just south, which is actually on a separate aquifer. Now, this all is called the Pearl River, um, and you can see all the details of that, but it actually heads um, through to Macau. So the surprising thing um, is that Guangzhou, even Guangzhou here, you can see is kind of not really um, part of that major river system. Um, it's actually more, the Shenzhen side is actually slightly, um, so it's a very interesting uh, fact, uh, both politically, um, economically, and a whole bunch of other reasons. So I'm gonna try to move this around. Um, so basically what that suggests is that um, Shanghai is actually very much different um, than you might expect. So that actually opens up here, just like we saw there, and to a very slight little river system where you can see these aquifers kind of separate draining and all kind of splitting in, converging right into here, um, where you have the Yangtze River kind of going off way into the distance. I almost need to move that way out to see. Um, I think I may need to even lower the resolution on this. Sorry about that. This is not loading as fast as I'd like, um, but... Um, <laughs> should load a little bit faster now. So you can see, unfortunately with this uh, lower resolution, it makes the aquifers look the uh, same way as the, uh, um, so the, the darker lines essentially are the aquifer lines. I think I tried to mix it up here. So you can kind of see this is the aquifer and then the main river line. Um, and it does help a little bit to have the mountains in here. So I kind of added those sometimes into the uh, diagrams. Um, but um, why does this really matter? Um, on the satellite imagery, um, it's really important to also look at the pollution heading out into these areas. Um, of course, we're kind of um, not even looking at how important this whole um, Bangladesh area is, as well as the Indus River. Um, it's a hugely important um hugely important area um, for uh, dumping uh, <laughs> all kinds of uh, waste into the water um, that needs to be thought about very carefully, um, as well as Myanmar. So um, this is actually not very populated, as you'll see on this map. Um, so um, basically, <clears throat> um, it's hard to say because the densities are not really, China's actually gotten into very high density housing. So um, there's actually not as much high density housing in India. So these dots look bluer, but it's actually, there's essentially the same number of people in China and India. And actually it's slightly more in India now, but essentially about the same. So, um, but on this aquifer map, you can start to see how the population um, shows up here. And actually, <clears throat> if you zoom in, one thing that I really like on these maps is that you can tell based on the aquifers, there's actually slightly different communities. They actually stopped um, building and construction on one side of the aquifer, and it's a totally different side of construction on the other side of the aquifer. Um, so that can be really also interesting to see the borders, uh, for example, the actual border of North Korea um, versus the uh, water-based border. Um, so actually it goes quite into China, so actually um, the border is actually should perhaps be different. Uh, but um, the other thing I really want to look at because the farmland is becoming so important uh, north of North Korea is essentially this upper region here. 
Um, so a lot of people don't realize this, but this is part of China, and actually it's almost half of China's farmland. Um, so actually China's farming primarily in there, um, but they're actually the new farmland is heading up into Russia. Um, and there's a separate aquifer, as you can see, coming out through here. Maybe it's kind of hard to see on this map, um, but I will spin it around here. Ooh, geez. Um, but basically on all of these, you can kind of start to see um, the importance of each of these major river systems. Um, I didn't really highlight this, um, but perhaps one of the more most important ones are actually heading out um, into uh, the Mekong River. I'm working on a project for that, um, but ooh, I think I actually split it wrong here. Um, so this one actually goes through to here, um, and then there's a slightly different one that goes all the way through here, all the way down to here, down to here, which is the Mekong River Delta. Um, and um, so actually what, what this does suggest um, is that Thailand is actually quite different than you think. So actually Thailand actually took some of Cambodia's land region here. Um, so actually Cambodia ends up, you find that this happens all over the world, but basically Bangladesh ends up dealing with all the dirty water that comes down from India. Um, and that similarly um, happens in Thailand uh, because Thailand, the border, the actual geographic border is different um, and actually includes part of uh, this area into Cambodia. Um, and that's actually a separate water delta here. Um, but, uh, and then also there's this one here um, going right next to uh, Hong Kong. I'm not sure why I did that in a separate color. I should probably keep it all red, but uh, but basically Hanoi there. Um, so you can see there's a separate area here uh, with China and everything. So I think I highlighted that on a different one to kind of show some details here. Um, yeah, where is that one? Okay, yeah, here it is. So on this one, you can start to see essentially how this affects water pollution in all of Southeast Asia. So basically, it's basically a combination, right? We have a huge amount of people dumping all their water into this area. Um, but actually, the fish and the biodiversity happens mostly out in the ocean area, which is basically Philippines and Indonesia. So as we get closer to south areas, um, basically this water plane, um, the water up here is much colder. Um, there's a different type of fish, obviously. Um, and there's just not as many fish because it's not as warm. Um, so the interesting thing is that actually Hong Kong uh, and Hanoi and all of Vietnam and really Thailand, uh, because the population is centered around Thailand, as well as uh, Southern Vietnam, um, these guys really play a huge role um, in the water pollution, as well as China. So I think if China starts thinking less about Taiwan and more about Hunan Island, um, they're essentially the same size. And I don't see why they shouldn't start thinking about water pollution and just working on Hunan Island rather than uh, forcing uh, Taiwan to also be part of China as well. Um, so it's an interesting kind of debate, um, although I'm not in disagreement with China. I think it's very nice to have a one China policy. Um, but anyway, so <clears throat> all these maps that we've gone through hopefully have helped you understand some things. Um, this map, again, as we discussed, there's quite a lot of stuff going on up in Russia, uh, as well as how this owl, this weird area, so you can see that it's actually hard to farm in a lot of China, and that makes this one new pocket uh, basically extremely important. And I'm actually going to put that in green, and I'll hopefully re-upload uh, some of these images so people can see. Uh, but this is just an unbelievably important farmland area, as well as up in here, and I think that's actually Russian uh, land, maybe, uh, at that point. So uh, it's actually different politically, uh, but and you can also see that it has a slightly different shape, so maybe I shouldn't even highlight that. It maybe is easier to see what the mountain range is uh, on these maps. I'm gonna be right back in one second. Okay, sorry about that wait there. Um, now, what I really wanted to highlight, um, going back to the climates um, map, and really the map of the entire planet. Um, <clears throat> 
So uh, these ideas uh, really start to give us a picture of what's going on around the entire world. And so uh, as you zoom out on this map, you'll start to see essentially what's going on. I think I should even change this to a 2D map so you can see the entire planet. And it's just so impressive uh, to look at all the rivers on the entire planet. Um, <clears throat> so really this is kind of the first time um, ever in history to have this kind of map uh, and the ability to really understand everything <clears throat> on the entire planet. Um, so you can see um, basically these massive aquifers, basically the Mississippi River here, <clears throat> Amazon, the Congo, and then what we just looked at here, primarily the Yangtze River um, and the other major rivers in Asia, <clears throat> including those in India <clears throat> and Bangladesh. Um, but um, basically, it's really awesome and fun to see this, and it can definitely help you <clears throat> with uh, work and business and also understanding your friendships uh, with people around the world um, just by helping to understand um, the river system. Um, so uh, that's just about all I got to talk about today. Um, and again, um, you can use all of these different maps uh, to kind of see um, the relief map here uh, does give you kind of a different picture. It makes it seem like there's not very many rivers. Um, there are quite a lot of rivers, um, but one thing I would say, a map like this makes you start to think there is a lot of rivers. Um, but when you actually dig into the details, uh, even the biggest rivers in the world, um, you know, you can basically see across typically and they're actually, you know, the ocean you can't see across, uh, some lakes you can't see across, but we actually have very few lakes on our planet. Um, and we also have very few uh, <laughs> rivers, systems. So let me just zoom this out here so you can see the population and river map on this one as well, um, just in case uh, you don't have time to load up all these maps. Um, on whatever kind of internet connection. So here you can kind of see um, how few lakes there are, right? We really have um, basically the Great Lakes in North America, a couple lakes in Africa, and then a couple lakes up here in Russia. And maybe these are even not really even considered lakes. Um, but uh, basically these are actually salt water. I was actually surprised to find out that the Caspian Sea was salt water. Um, so um, and it's certainly this is salt water as well um, because it's actually connected to the ocean uh, through the Mediterranean. Um, so um, actually, there's actually just very few lakes um, and actually very few rivers as well. You can't even see the rivers on this map, for instance. Um, they just don't show up on satellite imagery, so you actually have to load them in kind of artificially on this map to see where the rivers are, but they're actually far, far smaller um, than uh, what you may think. So if you do have a river by yourself, by your town, uh, even in my town uh, where I live, we have a tiny river. It's like only a few feet across, but the entire town basically was started because of that small river, even though it's a couple feet. We're talking, you know, like this, like, and some parts of the river really are only about that wide. And yet our entire town um, was kind of founded based on that river. Um, so if you are having a river near you, you are extremely lucky and be very proud of it and try to see what you can do. Um, and then this map really showed kind of the importance of that whole northern area. Now you can see the clouds kind of culminating, especially also happens on the South Pole. You have a lot of clouds kind of all getting cold air, um, warm air, kind of the cycles here um, and then heading back up towards the equator. And basically, basically up to the North Pole. So you may want to look at Wikipedia. They have quite a lot of <clears throat> different informations on, you could just do longest rivers in the world. Um, this is longest rivers in Asia, but definitely they also have it by uh, amount of flow as well as um, just total amount of water. Um, and then on their pages, you'll see these maps. And this kind of gives you a kind of a quick representation um, but it is really nice to look at the soil maps too, and I highly recommend that. Um, and you can uh, zoom in with different kinds of detail. I lowered the resolution just to make it be a little bit faster. Uh, so um, for sure, try to take a look at that. Um, and there's just so many things that you may not quite expect 
um, I was very surprised to find out uh, that the Great Lakes was on a different, was actually part of Canada more than the United States. And so actually it, the, the watershed region there was really surprising for me. So uh, personally, so you'll definitely have some fun trying to uh, sort through all of this. There's rivers all around the world. Um, Europe is actually very complicated. Uh, it actually heads quite a lot to the Black Sea. I was surprised how important um, essentially uh, Ukraine is and uh, different parts of uh, Turkey and you know Iran and just looking at some different details in Europe. Um, and then particularly in South America, you're definitely going to see some weird stuff going on in Colombia, Venezuela, as well as you might want to look at the, the amount of water coming out of there because uh, certain rivers uh, have more or less water, even though it doesn't show a big uh, aquifer footprint on here. It may actually be a lot more water than you think. Uh, some examples of that is down in Argentina. So uh, and then in Africa, um, you know, it's just kind of weird because there's the Nile River actually goes north. It's one of the only rivers that does go north. Uh, that's a major river. Um, most of the other rivers, believe it or not, are heading south um, or kind of like east-west. Uh, so the Nile River is kind of really odd. Um, and then there are quite a number of lakes. Um, and it is really interesting to get into the river systems, particularly in Africa and South America, as well as on these islands. Uh, if you zoom in, you can add uh, even more details. These are major rivers, but there's also minor rivers uh, that you can also add, but the map just gets to be uh, really chaotic. Uh, but it's super helpful to see um, you know, how the, um, particularly in Africa, I completely tried to diagram everything out um, for how the animals may try to get around Africa uh, using the aquifers. And there's actually different types of animals. I was completely su surprised to find out that monkeys will not cross rivers. And they're actually afraid to swim. So they will only go like into their feet. They won't even go up to their knees in the water. They're kind of afraid of it um, because of, there could be animals in the water and other things. So oftentimes it's not only the aquifers, but the rivers that will actually create different types of wildlife on one type of the river or the other. And so that can be very interesting um, to think about um, how significant it is um, to have rivers. So, um, and then there's just so much to go into detail about those jungle areas. Um, and then India is actually fairly straightforward to understand, except for when you get along the east coast of India, it's actually the Ganges River is only a small part of the complexity of what's going on in India, and as we looked at primarily in Asia. Um, and then basically all these islands, uh, it's probably even worth a separate topic um, to go into even more detail. I didn't want to get into all the animal and wildlife questions as much as the oceanography things because that's basically going to happen in Southeast Asia there in Oceania as well as many of these islands and along the equator. So particularly uh, all these rivers in this area and actually Louisiana dumps quite, there's actually 100 miles or more of pollution heading out into the ocean right there. Uh, and this is actually some very strong currents that eventually pull this water all the way up the north, all the way north. So it's one of the strongest currents in the world. Um, so uh, basically all these rivers in this region are also super important um, to take a look at. So, uh, but anyway, this is primarily a conversation on the Far East and I'll just quickly go through and make sure I haven't missed anything on our topic. Um, but as you can see, um, yeah, there's mountains in, in Europe, but the ones that we just took at, look, look at um, basically have created vast amounts of river systems uh, basically in the far east. Um, so you can see it just builds up more and more as you get east. The mountain range is there. Um, and, there and then the complexity kind of is on the burden of China um, primarily as well as uh, these other few countries heading down into there. And it's actually quite clear why Vietnam is a country by itself. Um, although I kind of agree in more of the policy of having no visas and just trying to travel freely between all these different countries. I think it's kind of terrible to be um, locked up in a small country where you can't quite get around. Um, but here's the soil map. And I tried to diagram, you can see there's definitely certain rivers 
have probably are the bigger rivers. Um, and actually Thailand, that's an example here uh, because actually Thailand gets quite a lot of water on those rivers there, uh, even those other water rivers that we noticed that went quite deep. Um, as you can see, these aquifers, there's actually quite a number of them coming all down through there. So that's a really complicated area to study. And it actually is nice because, because there's so many rivers kind of heading through there, um, it's possible to work with each one separately in terms of clean water, right? Because one river doesn't necessarily affect the other river's water. So it's possible to go and completely clean up an entire river that goes all the way back into the Himalayas. And some of these smaller rivers, um, the details here, like this one, I think we found this one that was kind of a weird one, maybe possible to clean up that one first because there's not as many people um, and it's more of a wildlife question on some of these. Um, and then I definitely wanted to highlight, um, you know, actually these islands, Japan, it's just a different story in terms of the rivers there um, as well as how the cloud systems work. So you get the rain patterns uh, can be very different depending on where you are. There's actually kind of a law about climate um, where if you get a certain uh, 30 degrees above or 30 degrees below um, is basically the tropics, uh, but then you get to a dry spell and then you get to another wet spell and it kind of depends on the angle that you are from the equator. So that actually has a major influence in terms of where the clouds are. And then also the clouds tend to not go over the mountains. Um, so you can see the clouds have kind of avoided this desert region here, um, which is actually the Himalayas, um, and that becomes a major factor. And then you can actually go in and diagram and see which cities, um, depending on who you want to work with um, and how uh, basically different areas are all connected, uh, particularly in China. Um, and it is difficult because there is no Google Street View. They don't allow Google at all in China, so it is difficult to get information. I did use Baidu uh, to do some street view, and you can actually uh, get street view right on the bridges of all these rivers. So you can go to any of these towns. Um, they only have maybe 25% of the country on street view, maybe even less. Um, so it is difficult to get street view uh, in China, uh, but you do have it available if you go to maps.baidu.com. It can be very interesting to take a look at those rivers and there's actually quite a lot of businesses and activity going on um, near them all. So, I mean, as we discussed, it definitely um, is not what you think. Um, you know, Hong Kong was actually on a whole different uh, ecological region. It's, diff it's just totally different than this rest of the Pearl River, which completely surprised me about how this goes. And then obviously this is going north. Uh, rather than south. So Russia has a huge factor in the Far East. The river system, I would say almost half the rivers, maybe 30% um, are actually Russian. So when you're talking about <clears throat> the river system in the Far East, it's actually very important to understand uh, that as well. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed all this discussion. Um, take a look at all these maps um, and try to make some friends. Uh, let me know. I've added these, these two some. Uh, film projects that I'm trying to work on if you're interested in trying to help out um, with a potential film project or you live and along any of these rivers feel free to contact me I'd be glad to try to work with you on understanding what's going on I'm using them as a vital part of almost everything I do when I work with people in Asia and just helping me understand how the entire wor earth works um, so I've had some really fun time thinking really far ahead because these rivers are probably going to be around for the next few hundred years, maybe even a few thousand years, maybe even million years, right? Because these mountains are probably not going to be moving. So what you learn about here is going to be valuable and helpful to understanding how uh, to plan things out um, for any type of business or any type of just helping the environment, um, which actually should take priority over anything else that we want to do. And, and just understanding how this connects to the entire universe. So, um, you know, what does this mean uh, in terms of how our planet was originally uh, shaped and how that works with the rest of the solar system and just what all is really going on. So uh, I hope you enjoyed all these different maps uh, and I posted them. So feel free to edit them or grab them yourself and try to um, figure out some things. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a great day. See you.